Good to be back out there. I, you know, we knew the guys would be a little rusty, be a little gassed, you know, just from coming right off of doing pretty much no football for over a week. You know, last time was Friday uh, and then getting up at, you know, whatever it is, 5 a.m. And, and getting out here and having a full padded practice. But I, I really like, um, you know, the effort level of this team, They're very professional. There's there's not a lot of rah-rah. Um, which is okay right now. We don't we don't need a whole lot of it, but there's a lot of guys that are um, leading by example. And um, I, I thought, you know, both sides of the ball had some success today, which was which was good. And um, you know, obviously, you know, we're going to be as physical as as we can be because uh, you only get 11 full padded practices, and, and obviously the, the limitations on what you can now do in those practices um, makes it very difficult. Um, you know, to, to practice at the, the physicality and intensity that, um, you know, we pride ourselves in. So when we get the opportunity, we're, we're going to take it. Um, uh, Christian Jones uh, rolled his ankle up uh, at the end there, came back in. Uh, B.J. Foster uh, took a, a knee to the, to the head, so he's being evaluated right now. But um, other than that, uh, every, everybody else. Uh, it was good. Tom, five or six days into practice, what have, what have you seen from Casey as he assumes this role, you know, of being you know, the number two guy working with the twos, and are you pleased with what you've seen? Yeah, very much so. Very, very pleased. I, I think, you know, we got to get him some reps with the ones because sometimes the twos, I mean, it's, it can be, a, especially in the spring when your numbers are limited and you're still waiting on that, most of that freshman class to come in, your, your twos. It, could, it can get ugly sometimes, you know, snap balls snapping over your head and guys running right through gaps, you know, because missed assignments. So um, we're going to slowly start working him in with the ones just so we can evaluate him a little bit more. But he's he's been doing great so far. After spring break, everybody accounted for? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody was back on time. No, no issues. And then uh, Anthony Cook. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Anthony Cook, Colin Johnson, both came back. How are they <coughs> progressing after? Yeah, their, they're, their uh, they're limited today, but I, I think you know I'll know more when we when we go back in. But uh, obviously not cleared for any team stuff. But but got into some individual and uh, Devin Duvernay did uh, as well. So um, I'll know more. I, I would expect them, barring a setback today, that we'll progress even farther Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Was um, Colborn limited also? Or? Say it again. DeAndre, uh, was yeah, but uh, blood levels uh, have been good, so we're, we're hoping, you know, they're going to test him after every practice and, and hope that we continue to, to progress him. Who's, who's surprised you the last three months with off-season work and now practice? We've got pretty high expectations, so I don't know that there's a whole lot of surprise. Um, they put me on the spot. Kirk's not here. I can't say some. <laughs> He's um, saving that for me either. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe Keontae Ingram on yeah. offense. You know, he's put on a really good 12, 14 pounds. Mm -hmm. He's seeing the plays develop a little bit better. He, he's got more patience and, and vision. Um, on the defensive side, um, maybe Deli, a day away. Really? Uh, just how well he's moving, you know, I don't, you know, we'll know more here about playing middle linebacker, you know, in the, in the days to come. But in the past three months, you know, he's, he's really, he, he's trimmed up, not that he's slimmed up, but he's, he's changed his body a little bit and, and he's moving around like the kid that, that we recruited, you know, and he's moving really good. Talking about, we're talking about Keontae, um, that was your big thing last year was you wanted him to put on another Weight, more weight through off-season work. I mean, how much did that affect the way you and Tim called plays, the fact that he couldn't make it? Uh, it yeah, I mean, I, obviously, you know, weight and good weight is, mm -hmm. is padding for your body, right? I mean, right. it's protection, it's armor. Um, so, uh, especially for your joints. And so, um, but at the same time, you know, it's not like, Trey Watson was a heavy guy. You know, right. Trey was 195 pounds. Now it was stacked on a little bit shorter frame, right. um, but it was a big deal. Let, let's just put it that way. It was a big deal for us to, to, I think, 
anytime a kid puts that kind of good weight on two in a short period of time, he gets a lot of confidence mm -hmm. too. And um, you can see him running out there with confidence right now. Tom, Coach, if you're looking at the film from last year, defensively, if you put your finger on why maybe the third down defense wasn't as sharp or the run defense wasn't as sharp. Because it was really sharp at times. You know, yeah. Georgia against Iowa State. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, obviously our, our pass rush um, could improve. You know, I think we, we had an probably one elite pass rusher um, in that played regularly in Charles, um, you know, and so we, we've got to improve our skills there. Um, and then I, I think, you know, we, we talked about, you know, mixing some different coverages up uh, with our blitzes um, to, to make sure that, you know, if, if cause quarterbacks are so smart these days, they're so well coached and, you know, if you show a certain blitz, you know, maybe it's the mic and the nickel, okay? Well, 95% of the time that's X coverage, then he's going to know where to go with the football. But if it's 60% of the time it's this coverage and 40% of the time it's this coverage, then, you know, he's got a little tougher job. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here this spring is, is mix a few more coverages in behind our base blitzes. Coach, Sam is now, he's always been the alpha. But now he's really the alpha in the, in the quarterback room. He has to be because Shane's not there anymore. Talk about his growth as a little as in that in that role as being the main guy in the in in the quarterback room. Now. Yeah, I think you know obviously as a starter last year he was. It's it's hard. It was hard for Shane to lead from the position that he was in, um, and he did it as like I've said to everybody. I mean I've been, I've been blessed. Was, I mean, from Kenny Guyton at Ohio State to um, to Shane Bouchelle, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get any better than that in terms of, of a backup quarterback. But I think Sam has grown. I, I think you saw him last year really focus on himself, where this year he's focusing on on everybody. You know, the the whole you know people in glass houses kind of deal, and you know get your get your house in order before you you start talking to other people so I think he's confident that that his guys believe in in his ability to play and now he can take the next step as a leader which is you know mentoring some some other guys you mentioned your receivers are are tall and long right Brandon's tall Malcolm Epps Avante Brew McCoy 6'3 even Josh Morris like 6'1 was that intentional as far as like from a recruiting standpoint and what was your philosophy behind adding that kind of height and length yeah, I mean, you still got to run. I mean, this is a, and then Brennan, you know, is probably the best example of that. You know, Colin and, and Malcolm um, are, are great jump ball guys. I think there, there's a definitive, you know, what we look for in, in those three positions. And, and the last two years was a little different because we couldn't keep LJ on the sideline. So he was the one guy of those three best receivers that, could play in the slot, um, but we had to change a little bit. You know, the Z is a guy that, that are, is going to run goes and posts, and he's going to block on perimeter runs. You know, so he's got to be a strong guy that can that can run really fast. The X we don't mind maybe if he's a notch or two slower, um, but he's going to be a big body. Anytime we get one on one coverage to the boundary, uh, we're going to take it. And then the H has got to be, at, you know, H for hybrid. You know, um, kind of part <coughs> running back, part slot receiver. So. Um, to answer your question, yeah, it was intentional in terms of recruiting those body types. I think at H, you know, we just happened to get pretty lucky that the, the, the guys that had that skill set in Josh Moore, in Jake Smith, really in, in uh, Jay Witt, Jordan Whittington, which was going to be his original position, you know, those are all guys, you know, I think Jake's the shortest at 5'10", maybe, you know, so um, we were just fortunate that that position also had some height, but definitely the two outside positions, we, we want them big. Relays Trump. coming up, you've got the guy, Tyler Owens, who's made a lot of a lot of headlines. What have you noticed him running and all his speed and, and how good is it to see him you know, put up those times and be able to... Yeah, I haven't seen him. Uh, run but I obviously been keeping track of his times um, 
He's really fast for a big dude like that. Um, you know, it's it's good to see. You know, we we know he's a he's a, a ball of clay right now. That that we're gonna have um, a really fun time coaching though because he's a great kid, comes from a great family, and just wants to improve daily. And and when you get him with that kind of tangibles, you know, measurables, if you will, you know, the sky's the limit. Tom, um, you may, you mentioned that. Orlando said. I'm next. Um, that he, you know, used that four eye technique because he thought it was the best way to stop the run. Mm -hmm. Did did that prove to be what you wanted it to be? Yeah. I, oh yeah. I mean, we, let's. The, the scheme is not not the issue. I mean, the, the scheme hasn't changed from, you know, at uh, Houston when I think we were top ten in the country in rush defense. You know, in a, in a league that's much like the the Big Twelve and. Um, you know, in 2017, we were great against the run. So, um, you know, we've got to do a better job, obviously, of coaching the guys that are that are in there um, to play within the scheme uh, to make sure that the scheme does what it's supposed to do. Thank you, Tom. Um, <laughs> you mentioned the leadership and uh, but not having a rah-rah guy right now. Is it preferable that, that someone has stepped up by now or does it really matter? In the I don't. I mean, I mean, you think about it. I mean, there's guys, you know, I know a guy like Malcolm is a guy that we're pushing really hard on, on defense. You know, Malcolm's been a guy that everybody's respected, but has kind of always, you know, acquiesced to the to the Wheelers, or to the Maliks, to the Charles, to the Breckens of the world. That he was kind of the Plan B leader, if you will, and now he's he's Plan A, and um, so he's getting used to that role. Um, Brandon's always been a, a good leader, um, but. He's a guy that he knows he's got to be more vocal. And now with him being out for spring practice, it's tough to lead when you're on a scooter on the sideline. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't concern me because I know that those guys exist. We've just got to do a, a really good job throughout this offseason of teaching them how to take that next step. Tom, are you guys getting Jordan in the of the HRC? No. I, it'd be, Maybe in, in fall camp. Right now, he's got a he's he's doing really good. I mean, he's he looks very natural back there. Um, so we want him to get a really good feel for that. Uh, you know, pass protection is a big deal too that, that he's never done before. Um, so that that'll come probably in training camp. With Telly, is it getting him to just trust his training and play fast and react? And not? Yeah, I think so. I think you know, last year he had that knee thing. I think I think it. I don't want to say scared, but I, I think it was always on his mind, um, which was difficult for him to play through. I think he finally feels very healthy, um, so it's easier for him to play fast and, and less guarded. And I think he feels better about his body, too. You know, he's, he's changed his body quite a bit. I know he came in looking like a, a grown man, but he, he's changed it even now for the better. It's all up on the running backs. In Ingram and Jordan seem very enticing as a combo. Where's Daniel fit into all this? Right there with him. Uh, obviously, much different skill set. Him and Kirk, uh, you know, are, are different skill sets. Um, so it's, I, I'm, I'm pleased with that room right now. Yeah. They, they, knock on wood, they, you know, they've, they've done a um, a really good job. In, and, you know, we've been in pads twice. twice right. So, I mean, it's – but. Thus far, all four of those guys have, have played well. What about defense? Uh, the second team, Court was out there at the linebackers. <laughs> I know a lot of that probably has to do with the Gabriel still being out, but what has he done in order to earn that second spot at this point? Uh, Court and Luke Brockemeyer, <laughs> Russell Hines out there sometimes at B backer. So, um, you know, we pride ourselves in our walk on program. Um, Court's done an excellent job, did an excellent job on special teams last year. Um, you know, and, and we would expect the same from, from Brockermeyer and, um, you know, Russell Hine as, as well this year. So, um, you know, he, he's earned the right to be there, um, but we've, we've got to start working in, you know, today was Caleb's first day um, being cleared, being live. So just working him and Marcus in slowly so we don't overwhelm them. What, uh, you ones, guys? What's DeMarvian showing you? He's natural. I mean, he, he's he's just a football player, you know. I mean, he's he's a run and hit guy, and when he decides to run, he can really run, and when he decides to hit, he can really hit.
Coach, as far as the rhythm of spring, did this break help you or hurt you? I mean, I know you talked about Johnny Hunt. This is the second time in the past, you know, so you guys, I mean, did, has it interrupted you? No, I, I thought it had a chance to if we had not come out and, and with the kind of intensity and effort today that, that we, we had. But, no, we've done it this way before. And um, what is nice is, though, these next three weeks will be very rhythmic. You know, so you get your two non-padded practices out of the way, which the NCAA makes you have those first two anyways. Then you you get them kind of used to the pads, and then, boom, now it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And the next three weeks are very rhythmic. So, um, you know, it's just how the calendar falls this year and where spring break falls. But um, I felt good about it.